Hello, everybody. Happy July 2nd. Ah, I don't want the summer to go by quickly because I love this special time so much because um, it, it's before you get into fall and school starts, which means grandkids have activities. You don't get to see them as much. And then it leads up to Thanksgiving and Christmas and and Halloween is too busy. <laughs> so I want summer to last a wee bit longer this year. So we'll see what we can do. Okay. Um, Mark put up a new quilt for me. I thought it's time for a summer quilt. And even though May is gone and May, we normally think about strawberries. It's still a good quilt. And then I got one of my Bargellos that I told you about. And I couldn't find my other one. I have a two fabric Bargello somewhere and I will find it. And then I I put the two pieces of my Nod quilt. I got that middle row right there, the nine patches and the sashing. So now all I have to do is connect those. See one row's laying on the floor. I need to connect those two together, put the sashing around the outside, put the border on, and then get it on the quilt frame. I tell you what, I have a lot of respect for Mary. She got hers done. And wait till you see, Melanie is rolling along with her blocks. So she's trying to beat the deadline. She has a self-imposed deadline because she's going to have her shoulder replaced. And, um, and I tell you what, the lady I know who had it done, doing really well last time I heard. So welcome, welcome. It is so, so good to see you. And, uh, okay, I forgot to bring down my agenda. But I'm hoping I can remember what I wrote on it. It was on the printer, and I forgot to go get it. But, so I have been working on... This nod quilt, I've been working on my flower quilt. Thursday night, we had, we worked on our triptych. My throat is bothering me. I don't know what I did, but I might have snored last night. <laughs> That's always a telltale sign. But I better not be getting sick because tomorrow I'm going to get my second shot of my shingles vaccination. And they said, you know, you're eligible for another COVID. I said, sign me up. If I'm going to get one, I'll get the other and just keep my um, immune system up and happy. So anyway, so Mark said, you know what? I'll go get another one, too. So he's getting another one, too, because we were going to. They want you to get them every um, every year now. and. So we were due in September, so we're just getting them a little bit early. All right, let's see all who is here. And then I'll tell you what we did yesterday. Okay, Marsha, Charlene Lawson is here. Hi, sweetheart. Uh, hopefully you're all back in your house and doing good. BB is here. It was so nice getting to meet you yesterday. Laura is here. Hi, Miss Laura Marsham, our sweet, sweet Marsham. She was the first person here, too. And Meltem, hi, sweetheart. How are you? And Debbie is here. Jody is here. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. Lisa's here. Yay. I couldn't believe Lisa joined us yesterday, too. Oh, I noticed my little I got to clean up my camera. My little lens that I view what you're getting to see was dirty. <laughs> you can't see it, but I can. And that bothers me. And Cheryl Hogan. Yay. Uh, Robin is here. Yes. Happy Canadian Day. Happy Canada Day yesterday. And our Nazi came in and said, it's Canada Day. So her and Mark wished each other happy Canada Day. So, and I've got some more pictures from Robin. 
So we don't have that many pictures for show and tell, sadly. But um, I know that ho when you can get more stuff done or when you can take some more pictures of things you've been working on, we'll get them. So, but it was so good to spend time with Lisa yesterday. Oh, Mark is here. Oh, thank you so much. He brought down my agenda. He knows me so well that I'll just sit here and go, uh. <laughs> oh, gosh, I would have forgotten half this stuff to talk about. So I'm glad he did. Oh, that was so nice. Okay, today I've been a little off kilter, but I'll tell you why later. And um, but it's so good to see um, Cheryl. I was looking at a picture of Cheryl with her class reunion the other day I was going through pictures on the site and I thought Cheryl looks like so much fun to hang out with if I'm going to party I'm going to party with Cheryl so oh it's so good to see all of you Melanie is here yeah wearing that puppy out huh? good for you for taking a walk and I got on my elliptical trainer today we're having temperatures in the 90s with um, still the orange smoke alert. And in fact, Robin, how are y'all doing with the smoke, sweetheart? And so I'm having to exercise inside the house, but I'm doing it. I'm trying. So. Oh, yeah, she slept for two days because you had bad air quality. So it's like get out there and, and walk her when you can. Oh, I, yep, I knew what you meant. Alberta Powell is here. Alberta, you need to bake something else so I can have a picture of a new baked item <laughs> because she baked the prettiest pie and I finally had to delete it. So, Alberta, if it's not too hot, you got to bake something. <laughs> oh, Marsha has a few pictures. Okay. Today you're at moderate but very hot and dry. We need... We need a rain system to go over Canada and just park it there for a bit. I like watching The Last Homely House, and I was watching The Last Homely Garden, and she said they hadn't had rain for six weeks. This is England, people. No rain for six weeks? I can't imagine. And Laura said, you're going to be 111 today. Oh, I shouldn't complain about the 90s, should I? Melanie said they you had a rain downpours like monsoons. And, you know, rain helps clean those particles from the air. Mark was talking today. Right, yeah. So Mark was talking about he wished he could go for a motorcycle ride. I said, honey. With this air quality and the heat, why don't we stand on the driveway and I'll point the leaf blower at you and we'll just, you know, we'll push all that air quality in. I mean, you're doing the same thing. He goes, yeah, I guess I better not do that. It's raining and storming in Detroit today. Looking for a better air quality tomorrow. Yes, for a while it was first on the East Coast and now it's in the Midwest. So... I I am so sorry. We've been breaking new, um, all new air, poor air quality records left and right. <laughs> uh, I know. I was just like, you can't go riding a motorcycle in this air quality. I mean, that just funnels that right into your lungs. <laughs> so anyway, my son came to visit and we had a great visit and I have pictures from that. And he came in Monday night and stayed here till Wednesday late morning. Then he went to my daughter's. They took, my daughter took the him and, the, and his beautiful wife Nikki and the kids to the science museum in Greensboro and there was a I've got to go there because there was a big um there's a big aquarium and I love going to aquariums to visit so um then oh and he was so worried let me tell you this sad story it just made me love my son all the more with the day they were getting ready to leave, they could not find one of their house cats. And this house cat, I think, had had its front claws removed, I think, before he got the cat. And because um, they don't do it that anymore. 
And um, it's too cruel to the cat. But anyway, this house cat who's defenseless doesn't know how to go outside and is defenseless if it gets outside. They couldn't find it anywhere. And they looked and looked and looked and looked, and it gave them a little late start. So they put food, cat food out back in case it got out and put cat food out front. And he came here and he told me he was, you know, trying to be quiet about it because they didn't want the kids to hear because they're just two and four years old. And he looked at his ring camera and he saw the cat that night come up to eat the food. So he was so happy. He was like, okay, there's the cat. So when he went home here, he's down here six hours away and her parents are off up in Canada. So there was nobody to go find this cat outside. But luckily, four days later, whatever, um, when he got home, they found the cat. So he said they washed the cat and he brushed the cat a bunch of times and they were so happy to see that cat. And that cat was happy to be back inside the house because the real world looks real fun through the glass window. But then when you're stuck out there and you've got a rainstorm and, you know, it's a mess. So, But the kitty is great. And he was so he was just my son was so worried and worried. He's such a tender heart. I just love my boy. And guess who's here? Alexis is here. Yay. It's so good to see Alexis. So my son's visit went really well. I love those grandbabies. They're so polite. They're so smart. They're so busy. Ah, it, I had a blast with them. I'll tell you when I show you pictures, things I did with them. I had a blast with them. But when they went to go over my daughters, I just went and sat down and thought, ah, I'm too old to be, I couldn't raise kids right now. I don't think if I had to. We used to have a wonderful um, woman on here, Sarah, who was raising her grandchild or great nephew and I thought the world of her because it's hard nowadays to stay that busy so I was exhausted but happy very happy all right so son's visit went well I've told you about the progress on my nod quilt and I told you about Melanie's progress so um I'm real tickled for her. She's working on her 12th block already. So let's see. I'll show you my flower quilt progress in just a minute. Yesterday we ran, because you know I'm giving a free Bargello class, July 10th through July 14th. We're going to do it on a live. It's it's on Jitsi, on, on the Jitsi platform, which is, just like Zoom, except free and no time limit. And so yesterday we did a, pardon me for the hiccuping. I think I'm, I get so excited. I swallow air and then I start hiccuping. But we ran a practice session yesterday and it went great. I was really pleased and it helped me. I think I'm going to do another one this Saturday because it really helped me kind of get used to the format and and what functions they have and i've got to get used to how to move my camera how to light my camera all that stuff because i think i need another light but we'll figure that out um what was i gonna say next but okay so i I talked about a walking foot. I read an article in an old magazine the other day, about four-year-old, no, five-year-old magazine. And it talked about when, when accuracy counts, use a walking foot. And then I thought, wow, to sew these long strips, use a walking foot. Because we were talking about when you sew long, narrow strips together, like we're going to in the Bargello, because we're going to sew 12 long two and a half inch strips together. If you, if you sew from top to bottom, everyone, you're going to probably get a curve in the strip set. So we were talking about the best thing to do is sew one from top to bottom, then sew the next one from bottom to top. 
Oh, and I just thought of something I forgot to write on here. Hold on one second about pressing seams because pressing seams is important how you do that. And I'll tell you why. So anyway, so we were talking about the only problem with that is we're doing two and a half inch by width of fabric. Not all fabrics are the same width. They vary between 42 and 44, sometimes 45 inches long with the selvage. So um, now personally, I cut off my selvage before I cut the strip because I like saving them. One day I'm going to do something with them. <laughs> But anyway, but the problem is at the top, I'm going to have all the strips line up, which means at the bottom, it's kind of going to go like this. And that's tricky. How do you, you know, you can sew it. What you would have to do is you would have to lay your strip out on a nice long surface, pin it at the top where you're keeping them all even, pin it all the way down. And that way you could safely start from the bottom and sew up. You can't just hold it together and stitch as you go. And, um, and you, cause you can't make them match at the bottom. They have to be as long as they're going to be. So when I saw that about the walking foot, I thought that could help eliminate any curving. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm making a Bargella this week ahead of our class so that if there are any little things I've forgotten, because I haven't taught this class in a while, if there are any little things I've forgotten, hopefully I will remember. So, okay. And so um, don't forget a walking foot if you've got one. Try to use it. Now, I was trying yesterday to put this walking foot that I found in my Elna um, foot box, my storage box, official Elna. I put this on, but the foot sticks out too far and the needle hits and it hit, it's a back and forward thing. I can move my needle sideways, but not back and forth. So I'm thinking that I might have a walking foot for a different machine, I don't know, but it's this long metal foot right there, and the needle wants to hit that little bar in there. So I've got to, if I'm going to sew down here with y'all, I've got to track down the right uh, walking foot. And I don't know about y'all, but when you have three machines, pieces are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to find it. So, and don't forget, if you want to talk to me, um, oh, Melanie, you're so sweet. He was worried sick. He worried about that kitty. If anytime you want to get my attention to ask a question or to say something, write in all caps, and that way I can see you much better. All right. So, we've talked about needing a, a long ruler. Um you're going to be cutting your tubes. So as long as you can get a yardstick, just be careful when you cut with that rotary cutter, you don't cut your fingers. Or tape two rulers together. Packing tape is really good. Masking tape is really good. But you need a long ruler. Then I talked about stickers. And I want to show you what I've done. Last night I was sitting there and I finished marking my stickers. All right. These, I don't know why I put a red dot on, but I said, oh, I'll start using those. So when I cut, when I get my order color, when I set up my 12 colors in the order that I want them in, I'll put this sticker on them so that I know I stay consistent. And those of you who were at the practice session yesterday, you won't believe what I did. I could not figure out an order to do these fabrics for anything. So I went online and searched for rainbow Bargello quilt. And every, almost Every single one, put them in the order of the rainbow. And I did that and I like it. So I'm not going to get more creative than that because I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I get myself so spooled up that then I can't make a decision. So once I get something I can live with, boom, stick with it and move on, Deb, move on. So anyway, 
Then what I did is took stickers and put these three codes on them. What ring a particular ring is, how wide do I cut it? And then the circled number is which color will be at the top, which fabric. And I have to decide what fabric is number one and then work from there. So I made up 32 of these stickers with the three codes on them. And I will talk to you about that. If you want to join me this coming Saturday, we can talk about more. Um, so one thing I mentioned was pressing. It's really important that you, you're going to cut all you're going to cut all these strips and sew them together. The best thing I have heard to help you remember odd number strips, you iron to the left. Even number, you iron to the right. So that way, if you have a consistency, once you cut these strips into rings, your seams will nestle. You know how we do that where you kind of cut them and they're going like, like this is the bottom seam and then this is the top seam and they kind of nestle like that together. That's what we're going to work on because I, for one, do not want to pin everything. You're welcome to pin whatever you want, but we've got a lot of seams that are going to have to line up on this. So let's see. I if if you're not on our group or you're not you're not able to get our notices or get on the site and read the emails, please send me an email at our time to quilt. And whoops, uh, I started typing, but I hadn't clicked on the line. Our time to quilt at twc.com. Because send me your, it makes sure I have your email address. I can then send you the link. The link is in already in our group. And so that Monday, July 10th at 3 p.m., then you just go get that link, click on it, and you can come into the room. It'll bring up a screen. It'll say join meeting. You put yes, and it'll bring you in. And if any of you are nervous about doing this, Come join us this Saturday, and I think we'll stick with the Saturday noon, and then I'll practice again. And this time, I'm going to practice recording it. I've decided that I'm not going to put this up on YouTube. And let me tell you, if I do, it'll be private. I choose to have you in my home. Not all of you choose to have the world in your home and or to be on screen in front of the world. So what I'm going to do is record each class and I will send you a private link to it. I'll put on the group's IO site a private link. And, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I kind of decided that the last minute I got an email from someone and I went, oh, I know a good idea. And I said, Mark, what do you think? Want to do a dry run tomorrow? So this Saturday at noon, I think it is, I think it is safer. And that way, any of you who are a little camera shy or who really don't want everything out there, then I'm respecting you. And once you get the link to it, if you want to show your best friend, you can share that link, but it's your choice. I want it always to remain your choice. So. Oh, yes. Oh, they do. Oh, I'm so sorry you had to sell that gold jewelry. Oh, that is beautiful. Mm. So um, so we will have them recorded, but I have to know who you are for you to get a link. So, um, and that just keeps everybody safe, you know, and private. Now, let me see. So, But I need to know if you want to take the class so I can send you the link. Because only the people who receive a link can join the class. And it's free, no cost for anything. The first day of class, you'll get a pattern. And um, and I think the ladies who they saw, whoever was there Saturday, um, got to see the pattern. And they, and they seemed to like it. 
Okay. So this Saturday, if you come, I'll show you the pattern too. All right. Now, let's say you'd like to chat with all of us because the nice thing is we can all talk. It's not typing in. If you want to, you can have your picture come up, whatever camera on your phone or tablet or laptop. It can key into your your camera and your microphone. So you can sit and talk with us. But let's say you'd like to see, get to see the group and chat and visit, but you're really too busy to make the bar jello now. Come on and come. I, I can have, I think, at least a hundred people. So, well, there's no way we'd have near that many and bring anything you want to do. If you just want to sit, if you want to color, if you want to crochet, whatever, knit, come and join us. And like I told them this past Saturday, the only thing I ask is while I'm teaching, just, you know, and I know you will, you'll be nice and quiet because you know me, I tend to, you know, lose my train of thought or squirrel. If a squirrel goes by, I'm gone. So I just will need to focus when it comes to teaching, the teaching time. But I probably will be teaching at the most a half an hour. And it'll be here and there. It won't be all at once. And so there's tons of time to chat. All right, bring chocolate. Quilts always come together better. Come together better when you have chocolate. Or if chocolate's not for you, bring your candy drug of choice. And uh, but uh, bring a snack, something to drink, whatever. Just get really comfortable and come play with us. All right. So it was wonderful, wonderful to get to see people and chat with people. It was so much fun. All right. And some of y'all were here, saw Mark trying to help me get things going and started. So uh, that was nice. Oh, and we got to see Debbie's husband, who was in his work overalls and installing a ceiling fan. And don't worry. I asked if he hired out as a handyman, and he said no. <laughs> so, because I know how we all think. Oh, he knows how to do stuff like that. Oh, I'd like to get, no, nope, no. Nope, nope. He said no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. All right. So, I've been working, watching Harry Potter movies and working on my flower quilt. And here is what I've gotten done so far. Now, I'm trying to decide, now that I'm getting closer and closer to being done, I'm trying to decide what do I want the background to be. Believe it or not, I think what I'm going to do is carefully cut this out with less than a quarter of an inch around the edge and applique it to a background. And I'm thinking I either want to piece together a swirl background or a log cabin background or just a bunch of blocks together. But I think I want a subtle, but something going on in the background. And so here it is again. And actually it is wonderful to do while I'm watching Harry Potter movies. And it allows me to take my time because see some of these little tiny pieces I've got going on in here. So sometimes there are little tiny pieces. Now, I'll make sure that when I work on it tonight, I'm going to take some sewing, long sewing tweezers because I had a problem with the steam -a seam 2 sticking to my finger. Um, I had a problem trying to put the fabric down exactly. And if I'd had tweezers, I could have done a much better job. But I, what I've been doing, this is the steam -a seam page that I first used a light box and drew the pattern and wrote numbers so I would know it would help me remember what shade one being the lightest six being the darkest i cut out one petal at a time and that way i can keep everything straight and uh 
You you were weird there? Oh, you're so cute. That's cute, Laura. I love when y'all are yourself. So, um, as you can see with the leaves, I used the same fabric that I got the um, petal purples and pinks and stuff out of, but it's an odd leaf color. So I realize I'm going to have to use ink tents on it, and then I'm going to have to do some thread painting because the leaves are too meh, marshmallow and I want there to be veining all of that in them so I will sharpen the leaves up I also will probably go over it with a micron pen something like that or a sharpie ultra fine point although i like micron better because sharpies can do just a minuscule a bit of bleeding through on the fabric but i probably will do some outlining with micron pens and because i'm going to go all over everything with invisible thread in a zigzag pattern so and then I think I'm just going to cut it out with a quarter of an inch to spare. That way I can do a background without worrying about piecing this, piecing the background around the flower. That Maybe that's cheating and taking the easy way out. Okay, I'll do that. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I pick my battles, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you what, life is too short. I'm picking my battles. Anytime you have to take and put this many different little pieces into something, I think I'm entitled to pick my battles. So anyway, so there that goes. And it's funny because when you're do doing this kind of work, you end up with lots of itty bitty bitty um scraps and you don't want to throw them away because sometimes you only need a little tiny dot so that's the flower one now and i realized last night too i haven't worked on my safari elephant for weeks so i want to get back to that the other thing i wanted to say is that miss jody has had good medical news lately. Nazi told me that she's been having very good uh, medical news in her treatments lately. I had good results on my last check and uh, I heard from Michelle. In fact, Michelle was at the, at the practice session for the Bargello and she said she's feeling really good. And um, she was able to eat. And so she's having some treatment things done. So, you know, if we're lucky enough to live long enough, it, some some problem will crop up here and there for just about everyone. So I'm just glad that everyone's doing really well. Nazi looked beautiful. And, and I had no idea. She was very open that she's had um, breast cancer like our dear Jody. And um, so, but she's looking really good. All right, so now let me show you our Thursday night quilt process and let you see how that's doing. And my Thursday night ladies, I've decided that after we finish this, this quilt, I'm going to take a couple weeks off. I'm getting a little burnt out from doing two shows a week. I told Mark, especially lately, I've been extra busy trying to get the garden in and having my son and daughter, you know, my daughter visited before my son and his wife visited. So I'm just, I feel like all I'm doing is every day is working to get stuff done for the shows. And I need to get some other things caught up. So once we... This is probably going to take us two more weeks or so at least. And then after that, I need a couple weeks off. But I thought, you know, the landscape and art quilts is what I get the most interest in. So I think we can switch to doing some of that stuff on Sundays too. But anyway, but I don't want to give it up altogether. But summer is such a busy time. I know definitely in the winter I want to do it. But as you can see... We're getting there a piece at a time. And I think it's going to turn out pretty awesome. And uh, so then once I get all this done, 
And then I sew everything down with this invisible thread zigzag. Then we've got to decide how are we going to turn it into a triptych. Triptych is a quilt or piece of art that has in three sections, three panels. And we'll figure out how, you know, are we going to, do, we could do it the easy, quick way, straight up and down. Or are we going to have them fit together like a three-piece puzzle? So we'll be deciding that. And I'm going to show you real quick before I do the main thing that we're here to talk about today, which is circle weaving. And I want to show you about that because if you have a if you have an embroidery hoop at home, you can weave. And I'm going to show you how. All right, let me put this. Let me put my agenda up here. All righty. So I have um, a list page of instructions. If you want to join in our Bargello class, I have a page of instructions for you just to kind of give you, you know, how much fabric, how do you cut it? And what can we do to make it nice and easy and fun? So just write me at my email address that I already included. And I will send it right out to you by email, all free. Okay, so here's what I decided. And in fact, do you notice the shirt? It's in honor of my Bargello color choices. So here we go. Let me, ooh, okay, sorry about that. Oh, no, okay, good. All right. And, oh, I am using a different mouse so i won't lose chat i said i'm not having that happen again so <laughs> oh okay and malcolm if you get any new things in your shop send me pictures and i'll keep showing what's in your shop for you because we love the work you do all right so here we go this is a girl who had no imagination left and here is where I started. All right. So I put the white here. Then if you know how to do Roy G. Biv, Roy G. Biv is an abbreviation that our art teachers use to teach us the color, the colors of the rainbow. And Roy G. Biv stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and green, blue, and indigo, and violet. And Mark was telling me, he looked online, and they said something like um, that uh, Isaac Newton derived got to, he was the first person to see the colors that were of the rainbow and to note what they were and he said he added extra because the number seven was considered to be so good so i think six was the original six was the original number they had planned all right now I decided to put these two oranges in this form because I didn't think this yellow looked particularly good with this one. I thought it looked better with this one. So white, red, lighter orange, vibrant orange, yellow, green, blue. Oops, I'm going to put the turquoise, I think. Did I, I forgot how I did this. I might have done the blue, then the turquoise. See, this is why even if you're doing the colors of the rainbow, it's good to put your stickers on it's because you don't want to have, you know, you forget. You will forget. I also told everybody yesterday what you may wish to do is take pictures with your camera phone. So you can step back just a wee bit from the colors. I'm going to kind of put these on top of each other because I'm running out of space. But this way you'll get to see them with and still be able to see them all. Okay. Okay. 
And I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember how I had where I had this lighter teal. Now I can, whoops, now I can move them down a little. All right. And then I think I put this blue in next. But I can always change this around anytime I want. So now I'll put this blue. Then I haven't decided, yeah, this I want to go on the end. So I'm going to go ahead and add the purple. And then the surprise color that Melanie told me about, which I now love, the brown. And then the final, um, the final dark. And the reason the, the light is on one end and the dark is on the next end is they will touch and they will sparkle off each other. So this is what I came up with. It, I sat here for half an hour playing with this, going, how am I going to line this up? What it, you know, I don't know how to make it make sense. I said, let me go see what other people have done. And sure enough, everybody just said, let's do the rainbow. Now, somebody did something really neat. They put a black in and they would intersperse some of the colors, like between the yellow and the green, they would add a row of black and then get up here, like in here, add a row of black. And it really set the colors off. But then I would have to add more fabrics and I want to keep it simple. So here's what I'm going with. And I hope, I hope, you know, I hope you understand that. And then... And the reason I put the teal in between these two is because the teal didn't look as good with the lime and and the teal broke up the blues. But when I are and when I'm absolutely sure, I'll put my stickers on this and then I'm ready to go. And I am I've got them in a baggie mark. All my different stages of fabric are in separate baggies inside a big baggie. What I like to do when I do a class, I pack everything in one giant thing. Try the, okay, let me try. BB just had a really good idea. She said, let's try the brown after the yellow. All right, so let me bring this down a bit. This is cool. And this coming Saturday, we can work on it some more. Well, I guess this coming Saturday, I should have it put together. Ooh. Oh, I like that. Look at this. What do y'all think of that? I like that. In fact, let me do something. Let me turn it this way to give you another view. Let me bring this out. All right. So what, what do y'all think of that? Melanie said, yes. Laura said, nice. Jody said, yes. Oh, this is wonderful. Let me tell you, when, when Melanie recommended the brown, it just... It hit me like a bolt of lightning because here is the focus fabric and there's no brown in there, but there's little tiny red and black. And then there's these two oranges. Well, there is a little bit of brown, brownish on the face. But when I put that brown up against it, it, man, it, it, it was amazing. Well, baby, look at you. The first blue by the second blue. Okay. Do you want me to put this this blue by this blue and maybe put this teal down here? Oh, yeah, it probably could, Laura. That's a good idea. So put the first blue by the second blue. Let me see. Maybe... And you know what? These are these are actually kind of both teals, but let's see. I think she might mean this. 
And then, you know, what if I put this down here? Nah, I'm not sure that goes well with purple. But let me see. Normally, you know, I love putting yellow and purple together. But I said, no, nah, I don't think I can really do that. But does that? Hi, Sheila. Nice to see you. Welcome. Play with your colors and photograph. Yep. Absolutely. But this will sh this shows you how trying to get it just right. But I tell you what, Bibi, that's and you know what? Bibi, if you've seen her quilts that she's had pictures of on here, she's really good with rich colors. Put the light blue between the other two lighter blues. The show me state. Oh, is that Missouri? Put the light blue between the other two. Now this, okay, this one, hmm, I'm trying to figure out what, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So nine, ten, no, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, okay, I think Sheila said, Put this in between these. And you know, whoops, hold on. Whoops, come on. I'm wondering. I'm just going to try this. Hold on, people. The nice thing is, doesn't cost any money to try. What if... I did something like this. Uh. <laughs> you aren't bound by rug rugby law rugby laws. You think that one that's a better thing? And I uh, even let me, I don't know if I like that red and, and white together. So what if I came here and put this, whoops, hold on, put this here, then put this here, or you know what, mm, hold on. I don't know how these are going to, woo. They, they play off each other. I'm not sure it's a good play, but they definitely play off each other. I was just kind of looking at what if I did this. I don't know. What are you thinking? But I'm thinking it's better than the white and red together. You like it? Okay. Do you have a deeper burgundy red? Hmm. No. Um, I'm. Let me. Let me go see. Do I have other reds? <laughs> I think so. Oh, now, I brought this red just because I saw it over there, but I think that's probably too orangey red. But I've got some wonderful Jenny Beyer reds. So I could even put... I don't know. I think now, I think that it goes a little flat. It goes a little flat. Let me try this.
And I could always move some of my arm. Oh, no, that still goes flat, doesn't it? Isn't that funny? I, I thought it would be good, but huh, just out of curiosity, this has some burgundy in it. But actually, I think I like what I had first better. Hmm. But let me do try this. Although, you know what? That kind of goes with the yellow and brown, though, doesn't it? Have you noticed that? I was thinking of trying this one. Which one? Which of these oranges? Which orange do you like better with the yellow? I'll call this yellow orange and this I'll call... You like this one better with it? Which one is considered brighter? This is yellow orange. This is uh, batik orange. Yellow orange. Okay. All right. So the yellow orange, she likes better with that. Then I'll bring back this red. It's funny that burgundy just went flat. I, I, I thought it was going to be good. Okay, so what do you think? And for y'all, this purple looks a little blue, but this is a definite purple. Okay, and if, if I later decide, I could try putting a more lavendery purple in, but I kind of like having this reads dark, this reads dark. There's some that are like punctuate. I, I think these three stand out. If you, if you squint, which three do you notice? And I think it's red, brown, and purple. And maybe this one. So that's good. This, oh, thank you. Thank you all for helping me. Y'all did this. I think that this is a good selection because you have little eye catches of color to help follow that pattern, you know, going up and down. Okay, so this, I'm going to go ahead now, if y'all are happy, I'm putting one, two, three, four. I am so glad that I didn't plan on doing this today, but this is great because now I I have a problem sometimes in seeing what colors work well and y'all really helping. Thank you so much. Ah, this is great. I, and I need, I need that kind of camaraderie that says, hey, try this. BB, thank you. You started us down this path. Thank you, sweetheart. That was wonderful. Okay, here we go. Thank you. That Now they're all numbered, and it's ready to go. So the next time you see these, they will be a Bargello. Whoops. Better stick back on there. Now, if I didn't have these little stickers, I could just use some tape. I could tape on little pieces of uh, postage notes or what, um, or, or pen little notes to number them. But I happen to have these stickers. Also, this fabric would not be, oh, thank you, hon. This fabric would not be good to use in, as one of the stripes because it's not consistent enough. There are spaces. So the color, the pattern would not read all the way through the Bargello. So that's, this will be the border that pulls all these colors together. Thank you so much. That was fun. I love that. I love, I always tell y'all, I learn as much from y'all as you would ever learn from me. So thank you, thank you. So now, oh, uh, come on. All right. Somewhere in this house, I have, a yarn or big plastic 
embroidery needle. But I'm not sure where it is, but I'm going to show you something anyway. Okay, got that back together. Put that in my bag. Let me see. I was looking in one of, oh, that's cool. Okay. I'm looking for a special needle. Aha, here we go. All right. And I'll show you why I'm looking for this special needle. I saw something on a website. Pens stay better, that's true. But I'm going to be honest. I get stuck all the time by them. And I'm always hurting myself. I had to buy cutting gloves last year because I was cutting my hand with my scissors. So luckily I haven't done that. But remember, I think I told y'all that I I heated a painted mug in the microwave. I went to take the mug out of the microwave. My hands were wet. Look at this burn that I got on the side of my finger when I picked up that hot mug out of the microwave. Mark said, how long did you heat it up? I said, three minutes. He said, oh, I never heat anything, my coffee water more than two. And I tell you what, I'm wondering, it did not, I think I got pretty close to third degree with that one. So I'm just taking it slow, being gentle with it. So I saw something and it said, take your embroidery hoop and turn it into a weaving, a circle weaving thing. And hi, Miss Mary. Hi, sweetie. So I started out trying this. Okay. And I tell you, I always show you my fails. When I saw some of these rings, somebody had carved grooves in them to put the string around. I know my hands are so important. I need to be much. Mark, before Mark messes with anything hot, he puts those oven mitts on. And I'm like, oh, I don't need that. Well, maybe I do. So, ugh. but anyway, I got one of these and I thought, well, how can I do this? Hmm, I don't want to buy something specific. So I got one of these rings that didn't have a outer ring with it. Then I thought, well, if I just wrap the yarn around, it'll slip and move. What if I hot glue it? And then I thought, well, when I do my, um, my Devon buttons, Devon buttons? Hmm. You know, the buttons that I make, all of a sudden, Devon buttons didn't sound right, but I think that's what they are. But anyway, um, I, I do this. I use a small ring and I, but I use one long string and go from thing to thing. But the problem is it kind of makes these spin outwards and they're not clear together. So I thought I'll do individual pieces of yarn. Mistake. Several reasons. I did hot glue, which is as acrylic yarn. And if you put enough hot glue, guess what happens? The yarn melts. <laughs> and then you have to try to tie pieces to it to make it work. Then it is almost impossible to get the yarn tight. So Mark was like, Deb, I don't think that's going to work. And I said, I think you're right. <laughs> Plus, you have to have an odd number of strings on here so that you can wind. When you're doing a circular weaving, you're going in and out and in and out. When you get back to the original place, you can't do the same in and out. You'd be, then it would all line up and it wouldn't be strong. You have to do an opposite where the other one comes over. You have to go under. So you have to do the opposite. And so then I went, Oh, I don't have an odd number. 
And by this time I'm going, uh, they're just, they're too, they're too mushy. So Mark being the smart one, I'm creative. He's logistics. So I think of ideas and he helps me figure out how to do them. So I came back down and got a complete set. Then I said, I wish I had cotton, um, thin cotton or heavy cotton string, you know, like a cotton all purpose string, but something the weight of like twine. I don't have that. I had some nylon expensive stuff, which I'm supposed to use to tie up my tomatoes. But then I have some of these threads of Aurifil, real thick thread that I got on sale real cheap. And I said, I'm going to try to use that. And so what I did is let me take this outer frame off so I can show you. All right. I take this frame off very carefully. I measured the circumference of this puppy. It was 44 and a half inches. I said, how do I divide this up into equal but odd numbers of spokes? Okay. Well, that gets into a kind of math that I never took in high school. <laughs> and so what I did is I divided it. I divided 44. 0.5 by 0.75, and I got, I forgot the answer now, but I found that, yes, I could do it. One would just be a little closer than the other. So what I did is I said I wanted these spokes to be, let me see. Oh, let me put some white paper behind them. But I wanted the spokes to be three quarters of an inch apart. So that's what I did. I came and got a tape measure, went around with a pencil, and I drew a little mark at every three quarters of an inch. Now, I wanted them to stay tightly where I put them on the string while I got ready to go down and wind it. Because what I did is I tied it up here and I went down and went one loop around the bottom so it would remain tight, pulled it up, then came and did a loop around the top. So you will see that inside and outside is the string because I looped it around and that was to help it stay nice and taut. Then keep them from slipping or sliding, I would just put a little piece of clear tape until I got it down and went around the bottom. And I've just left them because it's such thin tape that I can still put this back on. Now, if you want to make yours a little easier to do than what I did, you can buy something like this. And I've seen them use, people use a piece of cardboard, but it's odd because, oh, maybe they just come stay all on the front. I was thinking if they went front to back, but I've got to figure out when I do the weaving, how do I get it off this? What I think I'm going to do is stop the weaving back far enough that I can take this hoop off. I can carefully cut the string and tie it and then go to the next one, cut it, tie it before, and just move along one by one. And that's how I'm gonna get it off. So, when you put the outer ring back on and tighten it down, then you notice, then you know nothing's gonna move. And then you can start weaving and be a little more vigorous. Now, I'm hoping this RFL thick thread, it's like a 12 or something. I'm hoping that this will hold up to me weaving all kinds of fibers through it. Once I had gotten all, because you go like this and you just keep moving it a half an, or three quarters of an inch as you go around. Then when you get to the middle, I took a piece of, of thread about six inches long 
and ran through opposite spokes like this, pulled them together, put that thread through and tied it in a knot. Then I went completely opposite, went in between here and here and tied another one. And so now you can see they're pretty lined up, pretty good spokes. All right. So then I went to my yarn drawer. And to start the beginning of the weaving, I'm going to start in the center and work out. I wanted some good, plain, easy to see yarn. So I picked this. It has no fuzzies, nothing to get caught. It should be able to easily start my weaving. And then plaque. Plastic canvas yarn. I thought that would be good. And I wanted something that is a little tough. Then I've got this yarn. I found some of the chenille yarns. Um, another chenille yarn. But, oh, and this one's really pretty. Look at that with the little sparkles. But then when I feel comfortable weaving, then I can start using the eyebrow yarn or the eyelash eyelash yarn like this called eyelashes because it's got all the little fuzzies on it. So I picked out just an assortment of yarns and I'm going to experiment. And I do have, I actually have some roving. You can use roving, but I think I'm going to save my wool hand dyed roving for, for one of these, once I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do, I pulled these drawers out. This is a little case I have had for years and years. Oh, look at this. I thought so. Look at this. It's not a plastic one. I'd like a plastic one, but hey, this will do it. Look at that great big head on there and a non-sharp point. And that's what I'm going to use to do the weaving. And I found this one that kind of looks like a it's a, oh, it's a soft sculpture needle. I needed that when I was making the dolls. I forgot to look in this little tool caddy. I've had that tool caddy since I was in my 20s or 30s. And then here is a big Trapunto needle, but it has a couple littler ones in it. But I found a perfect needle. So I will get some of this yarn threaded up while I um, show you our show and tell. All righty, and I see what, I think I'm going to go with this blue in the center. So I'll get some of that, thread it on my needle, and show you show and tell. All right, let me turn this around. And you notice, we haven't lost chat, because I don't have that, that pesky, <laughs> pesky but favorite mouse. So, all right, let me turn the camera around. All right, let's back up. I love my setup now. This works great. All right, and make sure the camera is pretty even. Turn off my light. All right. Here we go to show and tell time. And don't forget, send me your pictures. I, I, I do. You know what, Debbie, you're so right. I know, Marcia. Um, oh, you were shopping online for mini blinds. That's important, Mary. That's important. And you know what? I owe you an email, too. I was going to write you last night and got so sleepy when I got done with my chores. Okay. But anyway, but I owe you an email. And yes, Debbie, I am one of those people. I jump in and then try to figure out how to swim. That's just who I am. It makes Mark crazy. 
but it also makes me more creative. If I had to figure it out first, I might not do it. So I am definitely jump in and then figure out how to swim. And I like it that way. I, I know that sounds silly, but it, it allows me a sense of freedom. Okay, so now where are we going? Brenda is our first person. I need Brenda, if you watch this, hon, I need to find out if you got the invitation to join our group. And if you didn't, please let me know and I'll keep sending it until we make sure. Because Brenda was not able to get on our site and do things. And so I had to, sometimes when people try and it just doesn't work, the best thing to do is the best thing to do is to then cut them out and re-invite them. So that's what I was doing, Miss Brenda. All right. Then here's our Miss Brenda. And don't forget, she has an online shop and she has a quilting service that is in Michigan. And Miss Melanie recommends her highly. Look at this wonderful, I love, this is, is, I bet you, her Zen Safari. And I love it. That is wonderful. I love how she's used fabric. It reminds me of like a burlap. I mean, the textures are amazing. And look how she used, how she cut the fabric to look like the wrinkles in that trunk. Fantastic, Brenda. And then look at the wonderful flower picture she is working on. Come on, get bigger. There we go. Look at all of her beautiful cutting and fusing. Just beautiful. And then here is the art that she's working from. Absolutely beautiful. So thank you, Miss Brenda. And this will I'm hoping to get some more new pictures from anybody who would like to share. So then, whoops, I did that again. I've got to find this picture that I made. Maybe I did find it, not lose it. Okay, now let me go back here to my name and go to... A Sunday Deb. Okay. Here. Oh, yes. Here is my garden. But I'll, let me show you just for some context. I've got okra coming up here. I've got a few little llama beans that are just starting to push through here. I've got some squash down here and zinnias here. But I've got a better picture. My green beans. You got to love green beans. Here is the garden area before when Mark cleared that hillside. And then he came and installed a fenced area so the chickens and the rabbits wouldn't eat everything. Now, let me see. Where is... Let me close this and find some of the new pictures of how things are growing. I, I get so excited. Well, now I don't see it. And I know I put it in here. Oh, here it is. And so now you can see I've got tomatoes along the back. Then I've got squash up here and there. I think the zucchini. Isn't it funny? The ones you want are yellow. The ones I want are yellow squash. But zucchini are hardier. Uh, the ones I want are the llama beans. But the string beans come up first and are hardier. But here are bush string beans here. And some squash, some squash, tomatoes, and the llama beans couple are starting to come through, but I might have to order some fresh seed. But I'm just so tickled at my little rows of green beans. So I got to take good care of them with this heat that started. All right. So here, let's see. These are my grandsons. This is Russell. He's four. This is Donnie. He'll be three in August. So they're about 15 months apart, something like that. Okay. They were eating their yogurt and fruit. They had strawberries and blueberries. This is so cute. Look at that. I love that. 
Then I wanted to take some pictures with the boys so I could make their T-shirts. And I took a picture with me with the boys. And then I added it. I cropped it so it would fit on the T-shirt. And then, oops. Okay. How do I close these all out? Hold on. I it, If it keeps showing you too many things, they get too tiny. All right. Here. We're having lasagna dinner, I think. Is this? I think this, yeah, we had lasagna and salads and garlic bread, and it was really nice. Yep, there Mark's eating his lasagna. Here are the boys at their little table. They don't have to carry high chairs anymore. That's wonderful. Here are the little T-shirts we made. Russell did all of his own painting. Donnie needed a touch of help because the puffy paint squirt bottles were a little hard for his hands to use. Oh, uh, this is just my burn again a few days ago. Here is this. I'm cutting the fabric for my, um, I'm cutting the fabric for my Bargello. And I love using a slot ruler. Because you just go two and a half inches. I can cut all the way up to seven and a half, 17 and a half inches without moving fabric or ruler. And I love that thing. It has cut my um, cutting time about 75%. So I had my big mat and my big slot cut ruler. All right. Now let's see what else. Ah. Here I am. I'm watching textile talks while I'm cutting my fabrics. And this was just an hour after they, or a couple hours after they left. And I thought, boy, life doesn't get better than this. Learning about fiber and basket making while you're cutting out really pretty, fab bright fabric for your next quilt. So... And this is a coffee table we have that pulls up. And so it's in my sunroom and, ah, a nice place to work. And here are, I had to decide between two browns. Everybody said this brown. Okay, where's my next one? Another picture of the fabric. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11. There's another one somewhere. I'm missing, oh, I'm missing one of the other blues. I didn't have one of my blues yet. Yeah, because I had Mary caught it, boy. She was like, you're missing, a, you, you only have 11. And I just wanted to show you these colors up close with that focus fabric. I was hoping Carol would come in because I said, I bet you Carol will like that. And then here I put this on site. To say what which one of these browns would work. And everybody said dark brown. So thank you, thank you for that. And my first instinct was to go with the darker one. Then my daughter is growing plant. This is a purple coneflower and a cosmos that I started from seed. And I still don't have mine in and I haven't repotted mine yet. But uh, although, wait till you see, I've got some pictures. This is some Monarda or Bee Balm that I grew from seed that she's growing. But then she had a hailstorm on Monday. And oh my goodness, the hail actually got up to the size of ping pong balls. Hold on. The, uh, this is my daughter and her son going for going on a kayak ride um on salem lake near winston-salem and then here she took him out for his birthday and i think they're at mellow mushroom yum my granddaughter charlie and my daughter so yep it's he's growing up fast all right let me pick up some new ones and I think I showed you this last week, the birthday cake she made him. And it's a strawberry cream cake. Oh, that looks so good. 
then my daughter has been going kayaking on Salem Lake. That looks lovely. And but look at some of this hail. So look at the dents, the dings on her car. Oh, and this is her new car. She's only had it a few months. Now, this is the Science Center in Greensboro. And I want to go see, I want to go see that aquarium. So this is Donnie, Russell, and my son. And they're enjoying themselves. And here is my daughter-in-law and the boys and my son. And I guess this is this little stingray uh, tank that you can touch the fish. And I love the boys are always willing to try new things. I love it. Here they are on the tractor that was over at the same museum. And this is my daughter and Russell was worn out from all of their fun. That is so cute. And then here is my daughter and her friend, and they went to a winery. She said, first time they've done that. So her friend's visiting for a week. Here is my daughter, my granddaughter, Charlie, my son, and the boys, and Nikki, his wife, at the Science Center. Okay, let me pull up some more. Oops. Bye, Evan. Okay, where, is, where was that last one? Da -da -da -da. Oh, here is me having my latest cancer recheck. I'm really good at waiting because that's what you do. You go and take the test and then wait for the doctor to see the results. So I always take a picture and send it to everybody going, yep, I'm doing that again. Oh, yes, this was from the Hypertufa. My daughter in Maryland, her wonderful, amazing iceberg lettuce. And then her Nicoshina or flowering tobacco, just beautiful. That is her beautiful pink salvia. Mine are now blooming, so I'll have to take a picture of mine soon. But they're so delicate. Hummingbirds love them. And there she is with her iceberg lettuce. That is huge. Look at that. I bet you it is delicious, too. And here is Becky and Charlie and my son's family at the museum. And, okay, we've seen that one. So that was it. Okay, that's it for me. Enough is enough. Let's go back and see who else now. Debbie. Debbie sent us some new pics. So I'm really tickled at that. I love this quilt, Debbie. I love it. That is so, so pretty. Love it. Look at that wonderful daylilies blooming. Or, no, I think those are hibiscus. Pardon me. Beautiful. And then look at this one. This is, it looks like, I'm trying to make it get bigger. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, look at that. I love collage applique. There's so much you can do with it. I love all her different fabrics. This looks like a wonderful still life from, from days gone by. It's absolutely beautiful. All right. Let's see. Oh, this is Debbie's Bargello. Look at her. Oh, it's the sea and the sand and the shore, the lighthouses. What a cool idea. I never would have thought of that. And here's another. Oh, this is a wonderful summer ocean quilt. I love it. Thank you, Debbie, for sending those. We love new inspiration. So don't forget, send me pictures of your current or previous quilts that you haven't shared with us yet so I can share them on Sunday because we love them. This is Miss Diana Bicknell. After having that that bad accident on their trip, she came home in pain, finished these quilts, and had a ceremony yesterday where they gave them to the veterans. 
And isn't that a beautiful, beautiful quilt? That is so dynamic. I love it. And here is the other one. So what way to go? I told her she makes me proud doing work like that for others. That's wonderful. Okay, so thank you. I mean, did I say Debbie Bicknell? Diana Bicknell. I'm sorry if I said her name right. That, that's our Diana B. The one with the beautiful striped studio in turquoise and white. This is Dolores' amazing um, llama. I'm hoping I got that right. I always get confused between alpacas and llamas. I apologize. And she used actual llama fur or was it alpaca fur? No, I've forgotten. And then she used a filing thread, the thread that's kind of can be fuzzy if you brush it with a stiff toothbrush. That is a beautiful work of art. She said she doesn't want to sell this one, and I don't blame her. Thank you, Miss Dolores. I'm wondering how she's doing. She had some shingles, and she was supposed to, I know she was busy getting ready for her art show. And this is Miss Jody's Bargello baby quilt. Isn't that sweet? I just love that. Oh. That is lovely. And then here is a courthouse steps quilt she's working on. Isn't it nice to see Miss Jody working again? Oh, it's like a breath of fresh air. Beautiful work. And then here are her 1890s nine patch block, something like that. It's an 1800s quilt of that she saw. And it's all made with small nine patches. And they're beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Miss Jody. All right, who is next? Let's see. Miss Mary. Oh my goodness, Miss Mary. Miss Mary finished her nod to the 19th century. And it is beautiful. She is so talented. And her colors are just as happy and bright as she is. The colors of summer. And I just love it. I love the how she placed them. I love the, the sashing and the cornerstones. And, oh, they're just, they're beautiful. It's beautiful. And then the quilting. I love it done on a diagonal like that of diamonds. Way to go. So, Miss Mary, you win. I don't know what you win yet because um, I don't know. But you, this is amazing, hon. I love how she hangs them to show. Now, that's a great idea. And she has these posts and then has what looks like a closet rod between them. Isn't that wonderful? Because I'm always saying, Mark, here, hold this. No, Mark, hold it higher. I know your arms are sore. <laughs> I love her piece back. Oh, you get to see that she did custom quilting design based on each block. That is wonderful. And then the borders had the diamond cross hatching. Way to go, Miss Mary. Boy, that makes my heart happy to see that. Beautiful job. Miss Melanie's block. Yay. I love seeing all of hers. Now, for a while, I was trying to keep straight which ones they were, but I can't really tell you now. I get confused. I know this was number one, <laughs> but I don't know about all of them. But I love her colors. I love how she runs with a certain color palette in mind and alters it along the way to give it a little sparkle. So I can't wait to see this put together. Very, very good. Isn't that neat? And you'll see some certain colors and some fabric patterns repeated that will then pull the entire quilt together. Isn't that wonderful? 
And let me see. Do I have any more? Nope. That Jacob's Ladder was her newest one, I do believe. But she's done a beautiful job. Okay. Who else do we have? Miss Polly just showing because I can't believe her English paper piecing is so beautiful. Whoops, I didn't mean to open two. I love her English paper piecing. That is exquisite with like a kaleidoscope center piecing. Love it. I love this. Oh, they're pentagons. They're not octagon or they're not hexagons either they're pentagon pieces oh that way i could maybe learn how to do that without breaking my promise to myself to never make hexagon quilts <laughs> i am silly look at her wonderful mug rugs that she wove talk about talented mm. and hopefully we'll see a picture soon where she'll show us the progress on this because that is gorgeous and I think that's going to be a table runner for her dining room. Isn't that wonderful? Mm, love it. Okay, let's see. Robin, we got some new pictures from Robin and Rose. Okay. Now, Robin showed us last week this wonderful Halloween. She had done all the creating for this scene. I love it. She made it all. Then here is Miss Robin's wonderful family up in Canada. And that is children and grandchildren and Robin and husband. That is terrific. And then, oh, I love it. Perfect for Canada Day. Oh, I love that. And look at this. Oh, that's beautiful, too. Oh, oh, Canada. And then look at this wonderful camping block that she made. Oh, that is so sweet. That is so sweet. I love it. And then she sent me this morning. She said, look what my purple cone flower did last year. She said, did I know what caused it to do that? And I'm not sure. It looks like a mutation. It's like the flowers burned uh, a whole bunch more little flowerettes. Ha if anyone has ever seen a purple cone flower do this, please speak up and tell her what causes that. I said, boy, I wish I had seed from that because that might be a mutation that maybe it would come back from seed like that. And I would call it firecracker purple cone flower. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So if anyone knows, please share that information with Robin or me, because I'd love to know too. But that's fascinating. Okay. And now Miss Rose. Rose is our newest member. Let's see. Oh, these two first two pictures are pictures from her dock in Canada where they live. This one's a winter scene. And then look at this wonderful sunset theme scene. And isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Then she wanted to send some pictures. So look at this sunflower picture she took. And if any of you are aware, I had to study this one time to do a sunflower. The pattern that's in the sunflower seed is called the Fibonacci method and it's a certain way of figuring out it's in these worlds that intersect and it's absolutely nature is a work of art speaking of work of art look at her multicolored carrots and tomatoes look at the wide variety isn't that beautiful so thank you miss rose for sharing these wonderful pictures of nature because you know what that's where most of us get our inspiration now let me double check hold on let me double check that that truly was the last one i didn't mean to close it down the way i did 
Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I think she was the last person. Yes, I need to check in with Sarah. Oh, I do have one more. I need to check in with Sarah, quilting for the soul. See how she's doing. What a dear lady. All right. These are not new pictures, but they're new to us. I don't think I ever saw these. I was going through our website. To, I went there first to see if there were new pictures. And this was in Sonia's. Her album from a couple years ago and her quilting is just immaculate and i thought you might want to see this isn't that beautiful so i said i don't remember ever showing these so i wanted to bring them in today this is a double wedding ring quilt and i think it has pictures on fabric of her daughter or maybe they're just certain designs. But look at this beautiful, look at this. This was dedicated to her daughter. And who sadly passed a few years ago. But isn't that, isn't that just beautiful? It touched my heart. And I thought, I don't remember if I showed this, but I want to make sure I do. But that is absolutely lovely. So thank you, Miss Sonia, for sharing something so tender with us. Now let me turn my camera around. I shouldn't have touched the lens just then and turn my lamp back on. All right. Now I turn my sewing machine off because now we're going to look at circle weaving. Let's see what circle weaving is about. All right. So when I started up that now, I'm not sure, but I'm going to tie a knot. When in doubt, tie a knot. I'm not sure when you start this, how you keep the thread. You know what? I don't think you really want a knot. So what I'm going to do is what I used to do when I did cross stitch or a little bit of embroidery, because I didn't do a lot of it. But oh, let me come back to y'all. Okay, here we are. Um, instead of tying, I could just tie a knot right here. But I think what I might do is just weave the threads in and out a few times. So just kind of, and don't pull it too tight because I don't want to make the spokes um, off center. I'm just going to just kind of get it to hold like that until I get around a few loops. So let's see. All right. When you do something like this, it's weaving and basket weaving. They all have something similar in execution. Now, I went down with right here with this yarn. So what I'm going to do Boy, you need your glasses for this one is come up. I went down in between some strands. So I'm going to come up in the next two. And they're kind of paired because I went around the, whoops. Actually, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, I kind of got that, that tail caught up in the first stitch. So that way, then I come in here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this so I don't get it caught up too many times. But now it's woven in and caught up in that first stitch. So now what I'm going to do is I came up through here. Then I'm going to go back down this one. And it might take you a few times to see what you're doing. When you, the more weaving you get done, the more clear it's going to be exactly where you are, what you're going to do. Now, let me zoom in just a little. Look, okay. Oh, hi, Catherine. So, soft, that is, 
That looks like a Greek name. That is amazing. I love it, but I wish I could pronounce it. I apologize. Normally, we start um, Sundays at 3.05 p.m. New York time. So it depends on where you are, but New York time. And But the the reruns, it's always there after we're done. Now, so I went down in this one. So I'm going to come back up. And the next one, ooh, those threads are tiny. So I'll come back up in the next one. I might not, I'm going to, this is going to take some practice. And maybe I shouldn't have put these rows so close together. But you come up and then you, you go over top, then go back down through the next set of strings like this so you're actually able to see the couple little stitches so i went down here so i'm going to come back up here but you go down in one come up through the now i'm left-handed so i come up in the one left of the one i just did all right then I'll go down and this. Now, this is the trickiest part because as it you get wider, as you get farther away, you'll have more space. See how they all come together here, but then it gets wider. And then you, you can use some of the bigger, hunkier yarns and... There we go. The bigger, hunkier yarns, and it'll show up really good. But this, you're just trying to get, get it started. So go back down in the next one. So I hope you understand what I mean. It's just you're coming in one pair, going back down a nut through another pair, and that over and under and over and under. Now, it probably, I wish I had a large comb because when you're doing, um, when you're doing any kind of weaving, it's nice to have a comb to keep your stitches tight and in the right position. So this bone folder will do a pretty good job for me. And I've got to be careful, too, because my threads are a little um, tender, tiny, and I don't want to be rough on them. But I, they're 100% cotton, and I will be ordering some thicker cotton string online so I can... You know, I think that'll be easier to work with than this tiny little... But this is what I had. I and I didn't want to use the yarn. You can even take your needle and tighten up your little stitches. But this is not going to show for the first few rows. But then when you get going, it's just trying to figure you want to cut them straight up and go straight down. All right. This might be really handy. I have a grace stand that I can get to hold this um, hoop. And this might be the perfect time to use that so that I'm not having to hold the hoop so I can just deal with, oops, let's see. The only problem I'm having is this yarn wants to stick to the wooden rails. But I just have to be firm with it. All right, so I went down. Now I'm going to come back up. And what I'm going to make sure to do when I go around the second loop, whoops, when I go around the second time, I'll make sure to split the little ones and go up in the opposites. So let me show you what I mean by that. All right, so you've got a little spoke and you've got the weft, I mean the warp threads going out around the circle, okay? 
And I went over the hoop. So I've got two deep, you know, one on front, and one on back. You start by you bring your needle up. You go over this one. Then you go under this one. Then you go over this one and under this one. And then over. So it's over and under every other one. Okay. So you see, that's what I'm doing. And then you just keep pulling them tight around the center. And then pretty soon, it'll look like this. Then, then, then it'll look, it'll go under, under. You know, you'll go over and under. I, I think I'm making it a little too simplistic. I have to add another one in here. But basically, you're going over and under, over and under, over and under, around and around, pulling it to the center. Okay. Yeah, a, a wide tooth hair comb might work fine. And... um, Or the needle itself, just as long as you just keep... Keep your weaving to the center and keep it nice and snug. When it comes time for me to take this off the hoop, it will be very important that I kept it kept it snug. Okay? Because you don't want it to fall apart. And like I said, I'll take the outer hoop, outer hoop off. And then I'll carefully, and I'll stop the weaving back about here. Then I'll carefully slice the thread up here so that I can tie it into a double knot, tie it down even with the, the weaving. Okay? I love this. Okay. Well, I, and um, for the new members... Our new people joining us today, we're going to have a Bargell free Bargello class coming up July 10th through the 14th. And we're going to have free classes on like a live platform chat, Jitsi, and free pattern, free class. So please let us know if you would like to join in on the fun. And um, send me an email to our time to quilt. Let me go ahead and type that in again since it's been a little while. Oop, here we go. Our time to quilt at twc.com. Whoops, did I, I did a comma dot. Um, if you send me no one m if you send me an email i will invite you it's all free and it's a lot of fun so we would enjoy that okay so now and so i'm up on this one so now i'm going to go down over top the one but uh, that next one the only thing I don't like about this method is that the yarn wants to get a little caught. So, but I'm just learning, so I'll probably get better at this. And I probably made my yarn a little bit too long, but it's just because um, I'm new to this and I wasn't sure. But you just, every once in a while, go back and tighten up, snug up to the center your stitches. I just thought, when I saw this, I thought, oh, I could weave. That would be fun. Because I haven't gotten out. I've got a loom I've had for 25, 28 years. And I need to get it and try to use it. But before I set that up, I thought this might be something really easy to do. Okay. So now I'll go back down in this one. So it's just over and under. And I'm sure you have done something like this, even if you haven't woven before or woven a basket. So now I'm going to come up in the next one. Wait, yeah. 
come up in the next one and pull it snug. Pull it relatively snug. You don't want to, you know, try to break the thing, but just relatively snug so it'll stay up nice and close. But you can see it won't take long until you've got, you know, just keep going around and around like a snail. So there. And we also have a group SIO. Any of you new people, if you would like to join our free group SIO, where we share photos of our life or our work, whatever we wish. And um, if you send me an email to that our time to quilt email address, then I will send you an invitation to it. And uh, that way you won't miss anything we're kind of working on. We like to get together and just have fun, make a sense of community. And I like teaching the good and the bad and the ugly of all of it. <laughs> Not everything I try works, and uh, but I keep going. So I think I just missed one of the little threads. So I'm going, pulling this back through. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now I go down here. And... I might not get the stitches in the perfect place with this, but as I continue to loop out and it's more understandable, then I can straighten them. And you know me, I I am here to have fun, not to be perfect. So I'm not going to worry about being perfect. All right. I'm going to try this. See if going back backwards will yeah it's just like oh i know now what i said a dorset button did i say that before it's a dorset button i make these in miniature and they're so much fun and i just get a plastic curtain ring and do the same kind of weaving and it's a lot of fun it is a lost it's almost a lost art the people of, people of Dorset, England, used to be able to supplement their income, their farm income, by making buttons like this and back in the 1800s. And so with a slice of a sheep's horn and some wool thread, you could make a button for a sweater or dress by weaving like this, although on a much smaller scale. And uh, until the Industrial Revolution came in, they had the market cornered. So they had wool from the sheep and, and uh, the horn slices, which made a circle. And uh, mostly women and children, but even some men, especially during the winter when there weren't many farm chores. And they, it would kept them alive, kept them going. All right, deciding where to go down. I'm going to just go ahead and take the path of least resistance. So I may have to, as I swing further and further out, I may have to clean up my stitching just a wee bit, like making sure I'm in the right, exact right place. back it's just a plane over and under and like i showed you you can use some really complex gorgeous yarns or some wool roving and start weaving that these are just my locking the little tiny center stitches and that's why i'm using a plain yarn but once i get the pattern fully locked in then I'm going to come back with chenilles and eyelash yarn and all the loopy. I, I, I can come back with any of these. And so that will make it a lot more interesting. After I do at least one of these, then I'll pull out my very precious hand-dyed wool roving. But I don't want to use that until... I really learn how to do this. So, 
All right. So here is what I've gotten done so far. And I'll just keep going. All right, everybody. Um, whoops. I don't want to lose my needle. Where did I think I dropped my needle? So I'll make sure. There it is. I don't want to lose this needle because it is the perfect one. I wish I had some in plastic, but this is the perfect tapestry needle. And it's not sharp, so you're not going to hurt yourself. All right. Let's see. Let me come back up. So we covered the progress on the nod to the 19th century. This is a Bargello I made, and it's a little bit different. Do you see how some of the, the strips were sewn at an angle? And this gives the icy mountain or icicle effect. This also is a quilt as you go. So I had the quilt backing and the batting. And as I sewed each strip right sides together and then lay open them up, it was already quilting. So that just needs to be bound. I made that ages ago. So we've talked about that. And we've talked about the Bargello class we're getting ready to take. That will be not this coming up week, but the week after. And one of the days, Wednesday, I might be helping my daughter. She's having some little bit of surgery on her ear lobe. And make sure if you see a freckle that you're not sure about, or people say, you might want to get that check due. Because the sooner you do it, then the easier it is to get rid of um, wayward cancer cells, okay? So, but we'll check. I'll let you know ahead of time about that Wednesday. And I'll let you know best I can. <laughs> and uh, it might be moved to that. That class might be moved from 3 p.m. till that evening because I want to be with my daughter when she has that done. All right, so I think we we showed you the flower quilt. Let me see. Oops, nope, the flower quilt is under a lot of stuff. So, but we, we showed our fabric paint by number flower quilt and the nod and the weaving and the Bargello. I think we're done. Thank you for spending this time with me. It means everything. Do something special for you this week. Something just for you. And uh, I know I'm going to get my hammock set up. Because darn it, I want some time with a good book in my hammock. And for those of you who might not know, we have too many mosquitoes and it's too hot here. So I set it up in my sunroom. I said, why not? You know? It sounds fun to me. All right. Take good care. Do something just for you. Send me pictures of your quilts or your gardens. We love seeing it. And I'll see you Thursday night for Art Quilt Thursday and then next Sunday. Oh, and this coming up Saturday, we're going to do another practice session for our Bargello class. And what I do is I give you some little good Tips and hints. I'll show you my progress because I'm making two Bargellos, one before I teach you and the second one I'll make with you. So I'll even show you the free pattern you're going to get the first day of class. So thank you so much. Take good care and do something creative and fun just for you. Bye bye, everybody. Take good care. Stay cool. Nice seeing you, Catherine and Sheila. Please come back. Glad that you are here. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week. Now, if I can make, there it goes. Yay. Take care.